Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rohan Khandelwal. I'm a surgery faculty and a breast cancer surgeon. And in today's video, I'll be talking about the FMG June surgery recall. I'll be sharing the important topics which you need to know for future FMG exams. And I'll also be discussing some tricks and tips to prepare for the FMG December exam. Okay. If you have any queries post this session, you can always ask me those queries either by putting a comment under this video or you can log, drop me a message on my Instagram ID that is left handed surgeon. So I've arranged the question system wise. First, let's start with GID and after each topic, I will tell you the important things which you need to remember from that topic and also the important topics from that system which are in, which you need to remember for the exam. So the first question was what was the gold standard investigation for GERD? Now we know gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. The gold standard investigation is 24 hour pH monitoring. So that is the gold standard investigation which is there. Whereas in investigation of choice, if they ask you investigation of choice, then it is going to be endoscopy. So investigation of choice is endoscopy, but the gold standard investigation is 24 hour pH monitoring. And when we do 24 hour pH monitoring, we measure the Demeester score. We measure the Demeester score when we do 24 hour pH monitoring to detect whether the patient has GERD or not. So this was a very straightforward question. The other question also has been asked previously, identify the pathology depicted in the image below. So this was a correlation with radiology and you can see the, in, the investigation which they have shown us here. This is known as an invertogram, right? This is known as an invertogram and an invertogram is usually done after 24 hours where you invert the child and you put a metallic pointer there at the proposed site of the anal opening. Okay. So this is done for imperforate anus or anorectal malformations. Now when you have this metallic pointer and you can see this gas shadow, you can see the gas shadow. Now if the distance between the metallic pointer and the gas shadow, if the distance is less than 2 centimeters, we call it a low anorectal malformation. Whereas if it is more than 2 centimeters, we call it a high anorectal malformation. So for anorectal malformations, we do an invertogram. But again, the best investigation, if they ask you what is the best investigation which can delineate the anatomy in a patient with anorectal malformations, then it is MRI. Then it is MRI. So please remember these two points as well. Again, this was a question which was more of a clinical question that what is the investigation which you will perform. So mother gets a child with bilious vomiting. The child has bilious vomiting. So we know that if it is bilious vomiting, the block is beyond the second part of duodenum. Okay. So that is common sense. The block would be beyond the second part of duodenum. So we have to see what is the cause. Now barium enema will tell us about large bowel. So barium enema is out. It will tell me about large bowel. Barium meal can tell me about the stomach and duodenum, but does it delineate the anatomy very well? And in an obstructed system where there's already obstruction, if I give barium, that barium will also become obstructed, right? That barium also will not go forward. Barium swallow is mainly for esophageal abnormality. So the best answer here is going to be CECT. Contrast in an CT scan will tell us what is the problem which the child has. Now this was a new question, a new topic which was asked in the exam that is colidocal cysts and not one question but there were actually two or three questions where they had shown images. Now this time surgery paper was slightly tricky. It wasn't as easy as the previous years, right? Uh, and the level of difficulty in the exam paper was also more which is why you can see that the pass percentage has dropped. So the exam is becoming more and more clinical and you need to be better equipped for that. So colidocal cyst, they had asked, which is a type 3 colidocal cyst. Now colidocal cyst is when there's congenital dilatation of the biliary tree. That is called colidocal cyst. So colidocal cyst type 3 is known as a colidococcele. It is known as a colidococcele and it is dilatation of the intraduodenal portion. 
it is dilatation of the intraduodenal portion and you can see here this one depicts the intraduodenal dilatation so type 1 is the most common this has also been asked and this is cystic dilatation or you have cystic dilatation of the CBD that is type 1 type 2 is a diverticulum of the CBD type 2 is the diverticulum of the CBD type 3 I have already told you is intradiodal portion or colidococcal type 4 is intra plus extra hepatic intra plus extra hepatic biliary radicals are dilated and 5 is only intrahepatic dilatation and only intrahepatic dilatation this is known as Caroli's disease this is known as Caroli's disease now the investigation of choice for colidocal cysts is MRCP magnetic resonance cholangiopancreaticography is the investigation of choice for colidocal cysts and this can increase the risk of cholangiocarcinomas it can increase the risk of cholangiocarcinomas these colidocal cysts so these are the colidocal cysts which I have just told you. Most common is type 1. I have explained the other types to you as well. And type 4A and 5 are the ones which require a transplant for treatment. This was another image based question. I felt it was very easy question. But because it was given in an image format, it uh, threw some of the students off guard. So they had asked what is the preferred incision for appendicectomy? Now we know the incisions for appendicectomy are what are the various incisions which can be used. So you can use the McBurney's incision right and the McBurney's incisions are of two types. You can either have grid iron, grid iron is muscle splitting incision, grid iron is muscle splitting whereas Rutherford Morris whereas Rutherford Morris is muscle cutting incision okay and another incision which is used is the Lanz incision so this number four this is known as the Lanz incision this is also known as the bikini incision and it is a cosmetically better incision I also have this incision I was in class seventh when I had my appendicectomy and I have a Lanz incision which is hidden in the skin crease so you can't make that incision out you can't see that incision a midline incision this is used for appendicular perforations a lower midline incision is used for appendicular perforation so the answer here is going to be number four that is lance or bikini incision now let's look at the other incisions also which have been marked here number one is a right subcostal incision this is known as a cocker's incision right subcostal incision or cocker's incision this is for open cholecystectomy this is for open cholecystectomy number two is a paramedian incision it is slightly away from the midline paramedian incision and number five is your fanon steel incision is the fanon steel incision this is used for caesarean sections. Number 5 is fan and steel. This is used for caesarean section. So you should know these incisions for your exam. Which fluid will you prefer in a patient who has come to the emergency room with profuse vomiting and metabolic alkalosis? So we know this. Let's assume a child who has hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. And in that child we know what is the metabolic abnormality. You have hypokalemic hypochloremic metabolic acid alkalosis right hypokalemic hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis and the best fluid in these patients is first normal saline ns is given normal saline is given and you should know the composition of normal saline as well normal saline has 154 milli equivalents of sodium and 154 milli equivalents of chloride Ringer lactate also the composition has been asked in the FMG exam. You have 130 milliequivalents of sodium, 4.5 milliequivalents of potassium, 109 milliequivalents of chloride and you have lactate, 28 milliequivalents of lactate as well. So that is why the name Ringer lactate. 
so in such a situation with profuse vomiting we will use normal saline right now normal saline ringer lactate and dextrose are crystalloids these are examples of crystalloids whereas albumin is a colloid albumin is a colloid okay a chronic alcoholic patient with liver disease presents with melina and hematemesis what is the most likely cause so the patient is having upper gi hemorrhage hematemesis means blood in the vomitus and because there is blood in the upper gi you are getting black tarry stools as well that is called melina right now what are the various causes of upper gi hemorrhage varices can be there mallory v steer can be there bor half can be there duodenal ulcer so all are causes now the hint which they have given is that this patient is chronic alcoholic so in chronic alcoholic right in chronic alcoholic you can get mallory v steer right which, which can occur because of splitting of the mucosa and the submucosa but more common in these chronic alcoholic patients will be esophageal varices okay so varices will be the best answer here and the hint is chronic alcoholic patient that is why esophageal varices would be a best answer now borhaf syndrome is perforation right so esophageal perforation can be of two types you can either have iatrogenic perforation or you can have spontaneous esophageal perforation iatrogenic perforation is after endoscopy right you do an endoscopy and the esophagus perforates this is more in the upper one third and usually these patients are stable and they don't require surgery right so majority are small stable patients you do conservative management in these patients that means you will make the patient nil per oral give iv fluids iv antibiotics and analgesics spontaneous esophageal perforation is called bor half syndrome this is also been asked frequently in the exam this perforation occurs after forceful vomiting and this commonly occurs in the lower one third of the esophagus the left posterolateral wall and you should know about the maclers triad in spontaneous esophageal perforation that is retching chest pain and surgical emphysema this has also been asked in the exam this is a mallory v steer a mallory v steer i told you is a split in mucosa and sometimes submucosa this is also seen in alcoholic patients common in alcoholic patients after vomiting and usually the bleeding is self limiting usually the bleeding is self limiting in mallory v steers now a patient underwent this surgery a few months back and he complains of dizziness headache sweating 40 minutes after consumption of food so you can see here that this patient has had a bariatric surgery okay this patient has had a bariatric surgery and this is a billroth reconstruction if you remember your classes i've taught you about billroth reconstruction right so this billroth reconstruction this can give rise to dumping syndrome and headache sweating tachycardia after 40 minutes these are all signs of late dumping okay these are all signs of late dumping so let's read about dumping syndrome now dumping syndrome can be of two types you can either have early dumping or you can have late dumping early dumping occurs when more fluid comes into the bowel as soon as the patient eats food and when that happens the patient is going to have bloating nausea vomiting right those will be the features and they will occur almost within 10 to 15 minutes of eating food and also the patient eats more food there will be more bloating and more vomiting late dumping on the other hand you should know it occurs because of rebound hypoglycemia so more insulin is secreted and that can give rise to rebound hypoglycemia that is why the features are headache sweating tachycardia now this will improve with more food and these symptoms usually occur after 30 to 40 minutes now because they've started asking about dumping syndrome you should know how do we prevent dumping syndrome so we can prevent dumping syndrome by small frequent meals by avoiding liquids with meals by avoiding simple sugar and sugar rich liquids 
and in resistant cases we can use octreotide as well we can use octreotide as well in these patients now what is the most common complication after bariatric surgery so this was a very straightforward question the most common complication following bariatric surgery is iron deficiency anemia and even last year there were two questions in the last fmg exam from bariatric surgery complications one was regarding iron deficiency anemia the other one was regarding vitamin b12 deficiency so iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency following bariatric surgery vitamin b12 deficiency can also occur but this will give rise to megaloblastic anemia so that was what was asked last year this is going to give rise to megaloblastic anemia calcium deficiency can also be seen protein energy malnutrition is only seen in certain types of bariatric surgeries like duodenal switch like duodenal switch and bpd that is bilio pancreatic division not in all bariatric surgeries you will not see protein energy malnutrition now this i feel is a constant question every year this question is asked in the exam about gas under diaphragm so you have a 26 year old male who has been brought to the emergency with abdominal pain and obstipation okay he had a bull gore to the abdomen 3 days back means a bull injury a bull went into his abdomen and the horns went into the abdomen his x ray is given below and we can see gas under the diaphragm right we can see gas under the diaphragm and we know gas under the diaphragm is a sign of hollow viscous perforation this is seen in hollow viscous perforation that is where you see it and this is asked every year they will either tell you that a patient has consumed analgesics and then has developed pain abdomen so after nsaids there is an ulcer which is perforated or it can be traumatic pneumoperitoneum as well so a patient is diagnosed with the pathology shown in the image she should be referred to which specialist so i'm sorry the image uh, you cannot see but this was an image of trichobezoar this was an image of trichobezoar trichobezoar is a hair ball this is a hair ball inside the stomach and we know that this is a psychiatric ailment in which there is first trichophagy means the patient starts eating his or her own hair and it forms into a hair ball that is called trichobezoar i'll share the image as a link and you can watch that image as well so this question has been asked previously also in the exam now a patient undergoes cholecystectomy a few days back and now comes with fever and jaundice okay so cholecystectomy was done patient has come with fever and jaundice mrcp magnetic resonance cholangiopancreaticography bile leakage is noticed so you notice bile leakage here now what should be the management of these of this patient now we know that it has been few days it has been few days in this patient so because it has been few days we cannot re explore because if we try to re explore then the sutures will not hold so if it is few days later we will do ercp and stenting endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreaticography so we'll do endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreaticography and we are going to put a stent through the leak right stent through the leak so that the leak stops this question also has been asked many times in the exam which tumor can present with a necrolytic migratory rash so necrolytic migratory rash is classical of glucagonoma okay insulinoma you know the patient will come with whipple's triad whipple's triad is fasting hypoglycemia this is fasting hypoglycemia okay and you have blood sugar less than 40 blood sugar less than 40 and the symptoms get relieved symptoms get relieved on taking glucose on taking glucose the symptoms will get relieved 
glucagonoma these patients are going to come with diarrhea they will come with dermatitis or necrolytic migratory rash they will come with diabetes mellitus and dementia as well right so these are the points which we need to know in insulinoma and glucagonoma you should know that insulinoma is the most common pancreatic endocrine neoplasm okay so this is the necrolytic migratory rash which you can see in glucagonoma insulinoma i told you that the patient will come with whipple's triad it is the most common neuroendocrine tumor or pancreatic endocrine tumor i'm sorry in pancreas and 90% are benign now vipoma vasoactive intestinal peptide tumor this can give rise to wdha syndrome or werner morrison syndrome so in vipoma or wdha syndrome you get watery diarrhea hypokalemia achlorhydria and acidosis this has not been asked in the exam as yet but insulinoma and glucagonoma both have been asked in the exam very simple and you know this was a very um, i would say a common sense question which was asked what advice would you give to a patient who is being planned for laparoscopic cholecystectomy so you know this time the questions are very clinically oriented lots of questions from git and they were very practical questions i mean you even if you haven't read but if you've gone to the ward if you know how a patient is prepared you can answer a lot of questions so patient is planned for laparoscopic cholecystectomy what advice will we give to the patient eat full before surgery no we don't want to do that drink plenty of fluids no anema at night so we are not doing a bowel surgery right so if you are not doing bowel surgery why do we want to give anema right avoid solid foods for 6 to 8 hours before surgery that is correct this is correct water sips of water you can take up till 2 hours before as well sips of water can be taken up till 2 hours before as well clear liquids can be taken up till 4 hours before as well clear liquids can be taken till 4 hours water till 2 hours but solid foods we need to keep the patient fasting for 6 to 8 hours a 16 year old male comes with bronchospasm on investigation the tumor is found in the ileum and has increased 5 hiaa what is hiaa 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid in the urine so what is the diagnosis here the diagnosis is going to be carcinoid syndrome we know in carcinoid syndrome serotonin is released and serotonin once it gets metabolized once the serotonin gets metabolized it can come out as 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid in the urine and this is what we can use to identify it the most common site for carcinoid tumors is the appendix this has also been asked in the exam so coming to the important thing i mean a lot of students are asking about important topics right because you know whenever they are preparing you need to lay more stress on the topics which are being routinely asked so these are the important topics from git investigations from esophageal disorders very important motility disorders achalasia is asked very commonly in the exam zenkers diverticulum not asked this year but every alternate year zenkers is asked esophageal perforations was asked i told you upper gi hemorrhage every year this is a sure shot question upper gi hemorrhage sure shot question peptic ulcer perforation also asked this year sure shot question gastric resection and reconstruction since the last two years this has become a very hot topic they are asking at least one question from this bariatric surgery complications also last two years questions have been asked bowel obstruction the investigations at the radiology you should know meckel's diverticulum intersusception duodenal atresia volvulus are very important appendectomy this time also it was asked appendix appendicular lump you should know appendicitis investigations in a child appendicitis ultrasound is the investigation of choice whereas in an adult it is cect rectal and anal disorders so you will always have one question from rectal and anal disorders one question will be there like this time it was imperforate anus but they was about pilonidal sinus fissures hemorrhoids as well liver abscess and anatomy of the liver 
गोल्ड स्टोन एवरी इयर वन क्वेश्चन अगेन शोर शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन गोल्ड स्टोन कोलिसमी एंड इट्स कॉम्प्लिकेशन एम आर सी पी ई आर सी पी दिस टाइम दे आर डास्ट कॉलिडोकल सिस एज वेल यू शुड नो अबाउट पैंक्रेटाइटिस इन्वेस्टिगेशन कार्सिनोमा हेड ऑफ पैंक्रियस दे वास अबाउट विपल सर्जरी वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली एंड एंडोक्राइन ट्यूमर्स ऑफ पैंक्रियस दे आस्ट टू क्वेश्चन this time so these are the important topics in git please make a note of these topics and don't miss out on these topics when you are preparing now moving on to general surgery this was again a very common sense question what is the best method for hair removal whenever we are taking up a patient for surgery i have discussed this many 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 times it is clipping using hair clippers right all the other methods shaving specially shaving is associated with increased surgical site infection rate there is a higher surgical site infection rate when you do shaving that is why we follow clipping rather than shaving again a very standard question asked many times repeat question split thickness skin graft has epidermis plus part of dermis that is spsg or split thickness skin graft so you can see here this is skin grafting skin grafts can be of two types you can either have split thickness skin graft or you can have full thickness skin graft split thickness skin graft is thinner it is called as a thirsch graft as well full thickness skin graft is thicker that is known as a wolfs graft also right now the donor site the most common donor site is the thigh in split thickness skin grafts and it is epidermis plus part of dermis once we take a split thickness skin graft we use a humbies knife and that is also been asked many times in the exam we use a humbies knife to raise a split thickness skin graft and only dressing is required and once that area heals up we can reuse it full thickness skin graft has epidermis and entire dermis right so you have to suture up the donor area and because you are suturing the donor area you cannot reuse it now because split thickness skin grafts are thinner they will have better survival they survive better whereas full thickness skin grafts have better cosmetic results right better color matching is going to be there and they are more resistant to trauma and what has also been asked in the exam that graft survives via three methods imbibition inosculation and neovascularization so that is the order in which the graft will survive imbibition is 1 to 2 days inosculation is 2 to 4 days and neovascularization is beyond 4 days this is a humbies knife which has been asked many 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 times in the exam it is used for split thickness skin grafts you should know about this this has been asked many times So you can see split thickness skin graft when you raise once you raise a split thickness skin graft you will get these punctate bleeding points and this will heal spontaneously and once it heals up like this you can reuse the donor site now when we raise a split thickness skin graft we can make cuts in the graft and this is called meshing and meshing increases the surface area of the graft so meshing increases the surface area of the graft and it prevents seroma formation means it will prevent accumulation of fluid beneath the graft now this is a full thickness skin graft you can see full thickness skin graft you will take it from the post auricular region the full thickness skin graft and you can see that it heals up really well moving on to the next question this was the question from trauma and they had asked regarding the grading of splenic trauma now if you have seen my classes i always tell you just remember splenic trauma grading just remember splenic trauma grading all other you should just know the differences okay so they are asking which is not a component of the ast grading so vascular injury is there laceration we know is there hematoma is there adjacent organ injury is not a part of ast grading is not a part of ast grading so we know that grade 1 grade 1 is you can either have a hematoma 
ग्रेड वन इज आइदर ए हीमाटोमा और अ लैसरेशन सो हीमाटोमा विल बी लेस देन टेन परसेंट लैसरेशन इज लेस देन वन सेंटीमीटर इन डेप्थ ग्रेड टू इज टेन टू फिफ्टी परसेंट हीमाटोमा और वन टू थ्री सेंटीमीटर लैसरेशन थ्री इज मोर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट हीमाटोमा और मोर देन थ्री सेंटीमीटर लैसरेशन फोर इज वैस्क्युलर इंजरी फोर इज वैस्क्युलर इंजरी टू द हाइलर वेसल्स एंड फाइव इज अ शैटर्ड स्प्लीन फाइव इज अ शैटर्ड स्प्लीन ओके सो दीज आर द फाइव ग्रेड्स इट डज नॉट इंक्लूड एडजस्टेंट ऑर्गन इंजरी GCS is almost routinely asked in all the exams so what does a GCS score of 10 denote in a trauma patient so we need to know 13 to 15 is mild head injury 9 to 12 is moderate head injury 8 or less than 8 is severe head injury and minor head injury is 15 with no loss of consciousness this is what is written in bailey so a GCS of 10 will denote moderate head injury and you need to know about gcs gcs is asked very frequently in the fmg exam okay another very common sense question a mother gets a 2 year old pediatric patient or child to the emergency room in an unconscious state the child is having diarrhea since 3 days and in a b c d e of evaluation of this patient what does d stand for so d stands for disability and a b c d is a concept which we commonly use in emergencies a is for airway b is for, b is for breathing c is for circulation d is for disability not diarrhea d is for disability and e is for exposure okay now another common sense question which was asked was a male patient comes with third degree burns to the neck and the lower back now we know third degree burns we have to do early debridement but before doing debridement you know burns patients are dehydrated so before you do debridement you have to first resuscitate and then do the debridement okay so they had given what will be the correct order in the management so first will always be resuscitation so these two options are out now after resuscitation we will do debridement and then we will do grafting now some students said that there were two separate options there was autograft and allograft some said that it was the same option now if there were other options autograft will be the best answer right because we will take skin from the same patient and we'll put skin there so that is known as autograft okay that is known as autograft if you take skin from the same patient and put it at the Uh, in the body of the same patient it is autograft that is the best in burns but if both them them were clubbed that is the best answer if not then you will mark autografting now there can be no fmg exam without pneumothorax pneumothorax is very very important very important topic so a patient presented to the emergency room following road traffic accident on examination patient was visibly breathless now this patient was visibly breathless pulse rate was 100 per minute dilated veins were seen over the neck and bp was 90 systolic right bp was 90 systolic there was a tympanic note on percussion on the left side what will be the treatment of this patient okay so they've given tachycardia hypotension and tympanic note so you can see x ray they had given you have a completely blacked out lung here right you can see pneumothorax there is air there so in these patients we will first do insertion of wide bore needle in the fifth intercostal space that will be the treatment so we know thoracic trauma tension pneumothorax the emergency management of tension pneumothorax what is the emergency management of tension pneumothorax we have to put in a needle and we carry out needle thoracocentesis in adults the new area where you put it is the fifth intercostal space mid axillary line that is a very very important update asked many times in the exam for children it is unchanged it is second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line okay now tension pneumothorax we can it is a clinical diagnosis 
it is a clinical diagnosis but we can use e-fast as well to detect it and when we do e-fast we can see seashore barcode or stratosphere m sign right seashore barcode or stratosphere m sign can be seen and i've already told you that we will do the emergency management would be needle thoracocentesis Another question which was asked was a patient undergoes thoracic surgery and the left lung is collapsed. So when the left lung is collapsed, there will be pneumothorax there as well. After chest physiotherapy, the lung expands. What is the finding shown in the image? So you can see here that the lung is expanding but not fully expanded. This area, it is still not expanded. Okay. So this is left pneumothorax because there is air there the lung still hasn't expanded completely this is pneumothorax left-sided pneumothorax which can occur so you can see here you can see that the lung is collapsed and you can see pneumothorax absent lung markings are there in hemothorax you will see an air fluid level in hemothorax we will so see a fluid level right you will see a fluid level here which would tell you that there is hydrothorax there. This can be blood, it can be pleural effusion. If it is blood, we will call it hemothorax then. Okay, another question which was asked, a patient gets run over by a tractor and is brought to the emergency room after two days. So this is important, the patient comes after two days, right? After two days, the patient has come after delayed presentation and there is extensive injury. So there is degloving injury, which you can see in the image. And you can see that the muscle is not very healthy looking. It is looking like dead, right? Not healthy muscle. So what do we do in these patients? Amputation, no, it is still viable. There is no gangrene. Debridement with primary closure, no. The patient is coming after two days. And if you do a primary closure, there is a chance that there might be an infection there. Flap closure, again, flap closure is also a type of primary closure only. If a patient is coming late, we will avoid a primary closure because that can lead to infection then. Okay, So that is why after... Elimination also, you could have reached the answer of debridement and hyperbaric oxygen. Now, hyperbaric oxygen can be used if you have an element of necrotizing fasciitis. Right? If you have an element of necrotizing fasciitis, which can develop after trauma like these as well. So, you will have to debride thoroughly means cut off all the dead tissue. Debridement means cutting off all the dead tissue and then do hyperbaric oxygen oxygen a patient suffering from Raynaud's disease so this was a question from vascular surgery this was a question from vascular surgery a patient suffering from Raynaud's disease presents to the ER with change in color of the fingers from white to blue to red which drug would you recommend so this is calcium channel blockers this has been asked previously as well so in Raynaud's you know the sequence of events how it changes is white, blue, red, is white, blue, red. And primary Raynaud's is more common as compared to secondary Raynaud's. This was a question which was asked last year in the exam. Primary Raynaud's is more common and primary Raynaud's is not associated with collagen vascular diseases or autoimmune diseases, right? Primary Raynaud's is usually not associated with collagen vascular diseases or autoimmune diseases, okay? Another question from vascular surgery, a chronic smoker complaining of cramping pain and walking 500 meters, gradually the distance at which he experiences pain reduces to 200 meters and over the next few months he starts experiencing pain at rest as well. So gradually the distance is reducing and gradual reduction in distance and this cramping pain these are classical features of vascular claudication vascular claudication okay or this can be seen in reno this can be seen in berger's disease in atherosclerosis where gradually the distance keeps on reducing neurogenic claudication is because of lumbar canal stenosis is because of lumbar canal stenosis and this can change with posture 
it will change with posture this pain will vary osteoarthritis pain it is worse when patient takes first step it is worse when patient takes first step that is what leads to the worst pain of osteoarthritis so another question from vascular surgery lad left anterior descending artery coronary artery disease which is the graph which will give the best results so great saphenous vein is the most commonly used graph material when we have to do a cabg what is cabg coronary artery bypass grafting coronary artery bypass grafting when we have to do then great saphenous vein is the most common but for left anterior descending artery left internal mammary artery will give the best results so these days the best results are coming with internal mammary artery grafts so gray saphenous vein is the most commonly used and a question which was asked last year in the exam which nerve can be injured while using this graft so the nerve injured can be the saphenous nerve is the saphenous nerve this was asked last year in the exam and lima lad i've already told you okay. right so let me cover the important questions which you, important topics which you need to know from vascular surgery so from vascular surgery what is frequently asked in the exam is regarding dvt so dvt they ask about the signs of dvt which are there and prophylaxis of dvt these two things you should know for the exam in varicose veins in varicose veins they ask about the clinical signs they about the clinical signs and the images of varicose veins and arterial system is the most important when it comes to the fmg exam vascular system in the arterial system majority of the questions will be asked from the arterial system and in the arterial system you should know about renault's phenomena you should know about acute embolism acute embolism what are the features of acute embolism and claudication claudication is asked frequently in the exam where they can ask you about atherosclerosis or they can ask you about burgers disease so these are the points which are important from the vascular surgery point of view the important topics for fmg now moving on to breast and thyroid so invariably there are few questions which are asked from breast and thyroid every year and these are very high yield questions one of them which is being asked frequently is a breast abscess and they usually either show a clinical picture or an examination a finding they will tell you so a lactating female presented with pain and swelling in the right breast since 5 to 6 days pain is associated with fever on examination the breast is red and tender and fluctuation is not present right so the writing fluctuation is not present what would be the next line of management in this patient so when fluctuation is not present we know fluctuation is a late sign in a breast abscess but if fluctuation is not present of course the first thing which we need to do in these patients is we need to give them antibiotics right we need to give them antibiotics and the antibiotic of choice is amoxicillin plus clavulanic acid amoxicillin plus clavulanic acid is the antibiotic of choice and that will be the first thing which we will do let's learn more about a breast abscess so it's usually seen in lactating mothers and staph aureus staphylococcus aureus is the most common organism responsible for infection and the source of the staph aureus is the oropharynx of the child now a lot of times they will show you an image like this of a red hot tender you know swelling which is there and you can easily make out that it's an abscess first we are going to give antibiotics and i as i told you amoxicillin plus clavulanic acid is used in one of the exams last to last year they had given cloxicillin as the answer so if amoxiclav is not mentioned you will mention cloxicillin if there is pus we first try aspiration so please remember we straight away don't do an incision and drainage these days we first do an aspiration only if the aspiration fails we do an incision and drainage now clinical and 
image based questions from breast are frequently asked in the exam one of them which was asked last year was inflammatory breast cancer so in inflammatory breast cancer we should know about pew the orange we know pew the orange picture that is because of involvement of subdermal lymphatics and if more than one third area of pdo is there and there's rapid progression then we call it inflammatory breast cancer and inflammatory breast cancer will be t4d so also you should know for the fmg exam the stagings which are important so the stagings which are important for the fmg exam are breast and oral cavity so breast and oral cancer these two clinical cancer stagings you should definitely know from surgery again a very simple question you had a 35 year old lady who presented with a mobile lump in the breast now we know a mobile lump in the breast or a breast mouse this is a very typical description of a fibroadenoma of fibroadenoma phyloid tumor you know will come with rapid progression rapid increase in size will be there right and if it will have a bosselated surface this has also been asked in the exam it will have a bosselated surface fibroadenoma is known as a breast mouse and the typical age group for a fibroadenoma will be between 15 to 30 years of age fibroadenosis this patient is going to come with breast pain and this breast pain will be cyclical breast pain that means it will be more before the periods and then it will gradually settle down as the periods start so again more clinical signs which are asked in the exam dimpling is because of involvement of ligaments of cooper retraction is because of lactiferous ducts so dimpling is because of ligaments of cooper retraction of nipple is because of lactiferous ducts pudi orange is because of involvement of subdermal lymphatics this i just told you this is because of involvement of subdermal lymphatics and this can be a sign of skin involvement in breast cancer right so one more question again a clinical question i have just told you a 45 year old lady comes with a rapidly enlarging breast lump now there is a rapidly enlarging breast lump which is firm mobile and has a bosselated surface i just told you rapid enlargement bosselated surface this will go in favor of a phyloids tumor you will also see dilated veins over the skin so phyloids tumor or cystic sarcoma phyloids usually third to fourth decade of life rapidly progressive dilated veins can be seen less than 10% go to the lymph nodes right because these behave as sarcomas they rarely go to the lymph nodes so we need not remove the lymph nodes in all these patients the management is either a lumpectomy or a simple mastectomy is done if it's a malignant phyloids or a recurrent phyloids this is a case of a phyloids which had recently operated this was around 8 cm in size now this was a slightly tricky question which was asked this time where they had asked you about the prognostic factors the good and the bad prognostic factors associated with breast cancer so this was a tricky question a patient is recently diagnosed with breast cancer which of the following is a good prognostic feature in this patient so lymph node involvement is a bad prognostic feature her to new positivity is a bad prognostic feature high mitotic index or is a bad prognostic feature okay uh, what are the other bad prognostic features triple negative breast cancer what do you mean by triple negative breast cancer triple negative breast cancer means er pr and her to new all three are negative er pr her to new all three are negative that is triple negative breast cancer if there is a high ki 67 ki 67 is a proliferative index marker this is a proliferative index marker so a high ki 67 is also a bad prognostic feature but mucinous breast cancer is a good prognostic feature other good prognostic features are tubular cancer er pr positive cancer her to new negativity all these are good prognostic features which are seen in breast cancers so you should know about this they might repeat this question with different options in the future exam moving on to the questions related to thyroid anti thyroid drug of choice in a pregnant patient in first trimester of pregnancy 
in first trimester of pregnancy so is this answer is going to be propyl thio uracil okay this answer is going to be propyl thio uracil now male patient comes with episodic hypertension sweating and palpitations imaging investigations reveal the supra renal mass what is the investigation most suitable for this patient so this time they had asked both questions from carcinoid and from pheochromocytomas pheochromocytoma they usually ask question it is very important so we know for pheochromocytoma most suitable will be urinary vinyl mandelic acid will be urinary vinyl mandelic acid right 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid is for carcinoid tumors amylase and lastase will be used in pancreatitis patients okay so when we talk about pheochromocytomas you should know about pheochromocytomas that headache is the most common symptom headache is the most common symptom hypertension is the most common sign and majority of the times this hypertension is episodic in nature as was given in the question stem now two questions have been asked the screening test is 24 hour urinary vma or metanephrines that is the screening test but the most sensitive test is plasma free metanephrines that is the most sensitive test so these two points you should definitely know for the exam they've been asked many times so pheochromocytoma it will appear as a tan brown tumor this is how it appears and on mri we will see light bulb sign this was asked last year mri is the investigation of choice light bulb sign will be seen extra adrenal pheochromocytomas you can see you can do a gallium dotatate scan that is the investigation of choice so this is the light bulb sign which is seen on mri which is the investigation of choice in a patient with pheochromocytoma so before we move on to urology the important topics in endocrine surgery the important topics in endocrine surgery which you should know for your exam so from breast there will usually be three questions which are asked from breast one is from investigation or staging one will be from investigation or staging one is from a benign breast condition like fibroadenoma or there can be nipple discharge of phylloids or one is from cancer and these days there is one question from pathology as well so either it is er pr her to new status based on that the molecular classification or good or bad prognostic features from thyroid since the last two years they have been asking about drugs last year they had asked how do you increase the dose in a patient who's hypothyroid this the this year they asked about propylthiouracil and another question is either regarding cancer or it is regarding thyroiditis or it is regarding thyroiditis graves or you know you hashimoto's thyroiditis now both pheochromocytoma pheochromocytoma is very important last two or three years this has been asked and carcinoid tumors are also very important so endocrine surgery four or five questions very set questions and they are usually asked in the exam moving on to urology now a young male male comes with dull dragging pain in the scrotum there is dull dragging pain in the scrotum and a very simple question they have mentioned bag of worms consistency so bag of worm consistency is seen in a patient with varicocele what is varicocele varicocele is dilated tortuous these are dilated tortuous pampini form plexus of veins so pampini form plexus of veins are varicocele and you will get a bag of worms consistency right hydrocele you will get fluctuation and transillumination this was asked last year they had shown an image of a hydrocele patient fluctuation and transillumination right in hernia we will see cuff impulse and reducibility cuff impulse and reducibility will be seen in patients with a hernia so this is also become very common these days rgu and mcu a mother gets her child to the urology opd after with complaints of difficulty in passing urine since a few months the urologist orders a test which is shown below what is the investigation so this investigation you can see that the dye is in the bladder and the child is 
passing the urine out so in the bladder passing it out this will be micturating it will be micturating cystourethrogram micturating cystourethrogram or mcu will be the correct answer here and in a child this is usually used to detect a posterior urethral valve so you can see in this image it is a copy of this image only so you can see the bladder you can see the bladder neck and then you can see the four parts of the male urethra you can see the prostatic urethra the membranous urethra the bulbar urethra and the penile urethra the penile urethra being the longest now if dye was injected if dye was injected from here through the urethra and then you would have studied the anatomy that would have been rgu retrograde urethrogram that would be a retrograde urethrogram now mother gets a male child to the opd with the testes missing from the left hemiscrotum so this child does not have a testes in the left hemiscrotum right testes is normal the left testes is present in the superficial inguinal pouch so what is the diagnosis here the diagnosis will be left ectopic testes right so testes has deviated from the normal path of descent it has gone haywire it has gone elsewhere that is known as ectopic testis so we know that testis arises from the urogenital uh, the genital ridge and at 3 months of intrauterine life it starts its journey towards the scrotum normally at 6 months it reaches the iliac fossa at 7 months it is in the inguinal canal 8 months it is superficial ring 9 months it is scrotum now undescended testis would be which gets stuck along this path if along this path it gets stuck it is undescended testis and the most common site is the inguinal canal and right side is more commonly involved than the left side and if bilateral undescended testis is there it is called cryptorchidism but if testis deviates from normal path of descent if the testis deviates from normal path of descent then we call it an ectopic testis and the most common site for an ectopic testis is the superficial inguinal pouch so no confusion here this is a very commonly asked question undescended testis and ectopic testis you should not get confused between the two right so before we move on to head and neck and other topics let me tell you the important topics which are asked in urology in the fmg exam in urology if we start with kidney so kidney the radiological signs are very important radiological signs are very important okay you have flower vase appearance in horseshoe kidney you can get adder head or cobra head appearance in urethrocele maiden's waist deformity in retroperitoneal fibrosis hydronephrosis all these radiological signs are very important renal stones are extremely important renal stones are very important renal tuberculosis even this time there was a question on thimble bladder where they had shown a contracted calcified bladder thimble bladder so renal tb is also very important rcc they can sometimes ask the types of renal cell cancer if we talk about bladder then foley's catheters are very important for your exam foley's catheter bladder trauma these are the two very important topic important topics in bladder in prostate they usually ask about turp transurethral resection of prostate complications so complications of turp are very important and they ask about benign prostatic hypertrophy treatment in testicular disorders testis undescended testis is asked every year undescended ectopic testis is asked every year in the exam right sometimes they've asked about torsion hydrocele or varicocele are also very important very frequently asked hydrocele and varicocele finally if you talk about urethra now so in urethral disorders what is asked is hypospadias you should know about hypospadias you should know the image of epispadias right you should know the image of epispadias 
और एक्टोपिया वेजाइकी दैट इज आस्ट वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दीज डेज इज यूरिथ्रल ट्रोमा इन विच आर जी यू एंड एम सी यू और आस्ट विच एव जस्ट एक्सप्लेन टू यू सो दीज आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स इन यूरोलॉजी विच यू शुड नो अबाउट What is the most common pathological type of oropharyngeal cancer? It is squamous cell cancer. So oropharyngeal cancers are usually squamous cell cancers. This you should know. The most common site being the lateral border of tongue. So prostate cancer, they have asked the grading system. Gleason score is a grading system for prostate cancer. Gleason score ranges from two to ten, and you should know that higher the Gleason score. higher the gleason score poorer the prognosis so poorer the prognosis so that is why a high gleason is a more aggressive tumor birad stands for breast imaging reporting and data system so this is used for breast imaging and it helps us in taking a decision whether we need to follow up a lesion or we need to biopsy a lesion The Bloom Richardson score is also for breast cancer, and the Furman's system is a grading system, not a staging. It's a grading system for renal cell cancer. It is a grading system for renal cell cancer. Okay. So even last year, if you remember, they had asked a staging question like this also, and they had asked which one is a is correctly matched. and they had asked about jackson staging for penile cancer right so these common staging names also you should remember for the exam like you have clark and breslow for malignant melanoma jackson's you have for penile cancer robsons you have for rcc these common terms also you should know for the exam Which of the following isotope is used for prostate cancer treatment? So the isotope which is used for prostate cancer treatment is iodine-125, and these iodine-125 seeds you can see here they are used for brachy therapy for prostate cancer, right? They deliver radiotherapy locally at that site. This is called brachy therapy. So this was again an unexpected question. The grade of glioblastoma multiforme A is grade four. It is the most aggressive GBM or butterfly tumor, or butterfly tumor. This is the most aggressive type glioblastoma multiforme. A. Grade one is usually a pilocytic astrocytoma. Grade one is a pilocytic astrocytoma, which has the best prognosis, whereas glioblastoma multiforme A has the worst. prognosis okay so i have told you the important topics of all the systems barring general surgery so in general surgery what is important for your exam are ot positions you should know about ot positions are frequently asked you should know about the cauteries monopolar cautery versus bipolar cautery you need to identify the image you should know about blades they have also been asked in the exam very important is prevention of wound infection prevention of surgical site infection this was asked this year as well about clipping of hair then you are asked about the types of wounds the types of wounds are also asked in the exam from nutrition you should know about riles tube you should know about riles tube you should know about total parenteral nutrition and the complications of tpn refeeding syndrome has been asked many times in the exam shock and blood transfusion are very very important you can get up to two questions this time there was hardly any question from shock and blood transfusion but usually there are two questions from shock and blood transfusion which are asked in the exam as well so these are the points in general surgery which you should know now those who got a great result and have passed the exam heartiest congratulations but those who missed out or those who started preparing for the december exam now we are start sitting in july right so we have august september october november we effectively have four and a half months left before our exam right so we have four and a half months left that is approximately you will have around 130 to 140 days are left for our exam okay now if you analyze the pattern of the exam it is becoming more and more clinical 
it is becoming more and more clinical and it is heavily relying on subjects like medicine surgery obs gynae psm pharma pathology right so these six topics or these six subjects are very very important for you these are the real high yield subjects out of which majority of your paper is being asked so it is my sincere request to those who are who are preparing that please cover these subjects in detail and do them early right don't leave them till the end don't leave till end these subjects you have to have to do early so that you can also revise it later okay now the other subjects the other subjects also you should watch the videos but for minor subjects minor subjects or short subjects okay or short subjects like radio like ortho derma psychiatry Okay. for these subjects forensic medicine for all these subjects you can even rely on the revision videos right to do them later on but these main subjects you cannot afford to miss out because if you miss out on these main subjects then there is a very high likelihood that you might not clear the exam okay try to do all 19 subjects but these six are very very important and they need to be done in detail the other thing lots of students are messaging that sir it was my third attempt it was my fourth attempt i missed by five marks i missed by six marks i got anxious in the exam ran out of time so please solve mcqs daily you have to push yourself to do mcqs daily at least 40 mcqs you have to do and you have to read the explanations read the explanations please keep on doing that also mock tests don't miss out on the mock tests right a lot of times i've seen students are not accustomed to sitting for long hours unse baitha hi nahi jata 2 ghante 2.5 ghante nahi baitha jata unse exam ke liye kyunki wo practice nahi kar rahe to aap please questions practice karo please mock test karo jisse aapki aadat bane exam mein baithne ki and please remember that consistent efforts consistent efforts are more important than erratic efforts right consistent efforts are more important than erratic efforts matlab kya hua iska iska matlab ye hai ki roz agar 3 4 ghante bhi pad rahe ho par regularly pad rahe ho to zyada likely hoga ki exam clear karoge but agar ek hafta achhi padhai ki and then you don't study for 2 weeks तुम्हारी प्रोडक्टिविटी फॉल्स सो ऐसे इराटिक एफर्ट से रिजल्ट नहीं आएगा आज से यू हैव टू मेक अप योर माइंड दैट एवरी डे थ्री टू फोर आवर्स आई विल स्टडी कंसिस्टेंटली थ्री टू फोर आवर्स फाइव आवर्स भी पढ़ते रहोगे डेफिनेटली एग्जाम क्रैक हो जाएगा एंड एम हाई राइट ऑल ऑफ यू शुड एम की आई विल गेट मोर देन टू हंड्रेड मार्क्स राइट इफ यू एम फॉर दैट एटलीस्ट वन सेवेंटी तो आएंगे ही आएंगे but if you aim for 150 then you will fall short so always aim high and it is doable baki bachcho ne bhi to kiya wo tumse koi alag thodi na hai so it is doable believe in yourself and you can definitely crack the exam okay so if you have any queries please do put them in the comment section i'll be happy to answer them or you can message me on my instagram id that is left handed surgeon you can message me on my instagram id that is left handed surgeon don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to my youtube channel as well i will be posting more high yield content for fmg before the exam thank you